In this video, we are going to explain how to glow up in five levels of increasing complexity, starting with the most basic techniques and getting more and more advanced the further we go. The advice in this video is based on over 60 different studies and scientific papers. You will find all of them linked in the description. This video is 100% sponsor free. Let's begin. Level one is built on two fundamental principles. And the first one is simple. Looking good equals being healthy. From an evolutionary perspective, humans are wired to find signs of health attractive because health means survival. So if you want to become the best looking version of yourself, you also need to become the healthiest version of yourself. And if you flood your system with processed food, sugar, alcohol or nicotine, it's going to show in your appearance. Your body is constantly reacting to what you put into it. And those small choices either build you up or break you down. So the first step of a glow up is to stop doing the things that make you unhealthy. But even a healthy body can still look soft, bloated or undefined if you don't take the second fundamental principle of level one into account. Fat is key. Your body fat percentage not only has one of the biggest impacts on the attractiveness of your body, but also on your face. You could have a perfect facial structure, but it won't matter if it's covered with excess fat. Research shows that even small changes in facial fat, especially around the jaw and cheeks, can significantly shift how attractive a face is perceived. So getting lean in a healthy and sustainable way is one of the most effective things you can do to glow up. Okay, now that we set up the foundation, let's move on to level two, which is all about small changes that require minimal effort, but can drastically affect your looks. Let's begin with the most underrated one. Every single attractive person across all ethnic backgrounds, age groups and genders has usually one thing in common, great jaw forward projection. That means their face develop forward rather than backward. And one of the biggest factors that influences this is how you breathe. Studies show that persistent mouth breathing pushes the face to grow downward and inward, leading to a longer face, recessed chin and narrow jaw. On the other hand, nose breathing naturally supports proper tongue posture and forward growth. It also keeps the muscles in your face engaged and improves oxygen flow, which is by the way the reason why you see so many people wearing nasal strips. So start breathing correctly. Over time, it will have a huge impact on how you look and feel. But of course, not every change takes years to show results. Some improvements are instant like changing your hair. Your hair can change your entire vibe and choosing the wrong haircut can result in your face appearing rounder, longer or even less defined. So the key is to choose a hairstyle that actually suits your face shape and hair texture. For example, if you have a square face, go for a side part or warrior cut to keep the proportions balanced. But if your face is long or narrow, go for a middle part or bus cut to avoid too much volume on top. If your face is on the rounder side, a slick back or high fade can create more definition by elongating your facial proportions. And if you're is large, a fringe or low middle part can help bring balance and draw less attention upward. So try to choose the right haircut for your face and not just what's currently trending on social media. But style alone isn't enough. Your scalp and hair health matter just as much. Thick, healthy and shiny hair signals health, while dry or thinning hair signals the opposite. That's why scalp care is a non-negotiable part of your glow up. First of all, get rid of the 3-in-1 shampoos. They often contain harsh surfacants and lack targeted ingredients, which means they strip away your natural oils without properly conditioning or protecting the hair. So instead get a shampoo that's made for your specific hair type and use it just one to two times per week because overwashing will strip away your hair's natural oils, resulting in a vicious cycle. The more you wash, the more oil your scalp produces to compensate, which makes your hair get greasy even faster, resulting in you needing to wash your hair more and more often. After using your shampoo to open the hair cuticles to clean them, you need something that closes and smooths them afterwards. And that's the job of a conditioner. But just like with shampoo, don't overdo it. Apply your conditioner only to the lengths and ends of your hair and not your scalp. Too much product at the roots can clog follicles and weigh your hair down. And once you're out of the shower, avoid aggressive towel drying. Wet hair is fragile and rubbing can cause breakage and frizz. Instead, gently squeeze out the water and let it air dry instead of using a hair dryer. It might not seem like much, but these small changes will add up. Okay, let's move on. Once you fixed your hair, it's time to focus on something even more fundamental. In level one, we already talked about the importance of having a healthy body fat percentage. But being lean alone isn't quite enough. Research consistently shows that people rate athletic bodies as the most attractive. It's that combination of low body fat and visible muscle that creates the look we naturally associate with health, strength and appeal. An athletic physique instantly changes how your clothes fit, how your posture looks and even how people perceive and treat you. That doesn't mean 
mean you need to become a bodybuilder. But if you want to glow up, building a solid athletic base should be part of your long-term plan. Now, even if you train consistently and take care of your appearance, you might still look tired, dull or unhealthy and don't know why. That's often because of something people don't talk about much, nutrient deficiencies. Research revealed that over 90% of American adults are vitamin D deficient, which can result in pale, tired looking skin and more pronounced dark circles. Magnesium deficiency on the other hand can cause muscle weakness, skin inflammation and premature aging. That's why getting a blood test done is one of the smartest moves you can make. Because no skincare product or technique will work if you don't know what your body is missing. Fix the inside first so the outside can follow. Speaking of the outside, let's talk about something that might sound basic, but most people still get it wrong. You need the correct hygiene routine. Poor hygiene ruins even the best genetics. But that doesn't mean you need an expensive 10 step routine. The skincare industry tries to exploit your insecurity by selling you overpriced products you don't need. But in reality, you only need a few essentials to get 95% of the results. Start with identifying your exact skin type and get a cleanser, moisturizer and sunscreen that's specifically formulated for it. The cleanser removes oil, dirt and buildup. The moisturizer keeps your skin hydrated, protected and smooth. And sunscreen protects you from UV radiation, which is the number one cause of premature aging. UV radiation breaks down collagen, which causes wrinkles, hollow ibex and dulled skin. It can take years until the damage becomes visible. This delay creates a huge disconnect between action and consequence. That's why so many people just ignore it. But sunscreen is not optional. It's your number one tool to prevent your skin from aging. In level one, we built the foundation. In level two, we focused on the basics. Now let's move on to level three, where we take it one step further. By focusing on very specific techniques that require a bit more time and effort, but can improve your attractiveness immensely. As you probably know, one of the first things people notice about you are your eyes. But most don't realize just how big of an impact your eyebrows have. They shape your entire eye area and even small changes can completely shift how balanced or intense your face looks. And that's not just an opinion. Studies show that thicker and darker eyebrows are consistently rated as more attractive. So how can we improve the thickness of our eyebrows naturally? One of the most effective methods to stimulate eyebrow growth is microneedling. Microneedling works by creating tiny micro injuries in the skin. This triggers a controlled wound healing response. As a result, dormant hair follicles can be reactivated. But it also has one more crucial benefit, improving the absorption of topical products like rosemary oil. Rosemary oil improves the vascularity and circulation of blood and additionally enhances the regeneration of hair follicles. Research even showed that it was similar in effectiveness to minoxidil, which is known as a potent medication for stimulating hair growth. So as you can see, microneedling and rosemary oil work together hand in hand growing your brows. But you also need to shape them correctly. Eyebrows are one of the few features where you have full control over symmetry. If your eyes are slightly asymmetrical, you can trim and shape your brows in a way that balances out the difference. You can also use trimming to influence how close or far apart your eyes appear. You can trim the inner ends to create more space or let your brows grow more inward to bring your features closer together. Okay, now that you fixed your brows, let's talk about the eyes itself. Many people assume that eye color is what makes eyes attractive. But research shows that's not the case. Because beautiful eyes are all about contrast and not the color of the iris. A recent study found that scleral contrast, that's the brightness of the white part of your eyes compared to the iris, is a much stronger predictor of perceived beauty than eye color. That means if your eyes are dull, yellowish or irritated, they will look tired no matter what color they are. To improve scleral whiteness, you need to reduce the inflammation in the body, which means no smoking, low sugar, omega 3s and vitamin A. Additionally, a lot of professional models also use eye drops to hydrate and whiten their eyes before their shoot. This is one of the most overlooked ways to instantly make your eyes look fresher, whiter and more attractive. But there is one more thing that can completely destroy even the most perfect eye area under eye bags and dark circles. Multiple studies have shown that under eyes make you appear more tired, less healthy and even less trustworthy. It's one of the strongest negative cues in facial perception and often the first thing people notice in a face to face interaction. We won't go into full detail here because we created a dedicated video covering causes, treatments and proven solutions. You will find it linked in the description and in the info card. So that's it for the eye area. Now it's time to move a little further down. And once again, it's all about contrast. Healthy lips naturally create contrast to your skin and teeth, making them stand out. Dry, flaky or greasy lips on the other hand instantly signal poor hydration, low self-care and can even feel off-putting to others. What matters most isn't size or shape 
but texture, hydration and color balance. So to keep your lips in top condition, you can use Vaseline or a lip balm. A highly underrated tip is using one that contains SPF because lips don't produce melanin. So they are highly vulnerable to sun damage, which over time can lead to discoloration, dryness and even volume loss. And please resist the urge to lick your lips to moisturize them. It might feel good for a second, but it actually makes things worse. Research by Fonesca and colleague warns, salvia contains digestive enzymes, leading to a breakdown of the protective barrier, with subsequent reduction of moisture and increased vulnerability to irritants. In short, that means lip licking dries out your lips even more. So please break that habit. Okay, now you have perfect lips, but none of that matters if your teeth behind them are unattractive. People with whiter teeth are consistently rated as more attractive, because they signal strong immunity and a low risk of disease, infection or decay. So what can you do? Start with the basics. Avoid staining drinks like coffee, black tea and red wine. Or use a straw. Brush twice a day, floss and rinse with a non-alcoholic mouthwash. Additionally, we also recommend to start using a tongue scraper every morning. Because to use the words of Choi and colleagues, a major component of bad breath is due to the bacteria coating the tongue. And brushing or rinsing alone doesn't remove it effectively. But a tongue scraper can, which will make your breath noticeably fresher. Okay, for the last part of level 3, let's not talk about something people see. Let's talk about something they remember. Your smell. Two survey studies found that women rank how a man smells as the most important physical trait in their choice of a sexual partner. But that doesn't mean you have to buy the most expensive designer fragrance. The key is to find a scent that fits you. A fragrance you enjoy wearing. But before any fragrance comes into play, let's be clear. The foundation of smelling good is how you shower. You need something that cleans without overwhelming your skin. The optimal choice is a high quality, mild and neutral body wash. And please avoid typical 3-in-1 sports gels. They are harsh, overly perfumed and often clash with your actual fragrance. Also wash properly, not just with your hands. Use a soft sponge or washcloth to remove sweat, bacteria and build up. And once you've got that base, you can layer your fragrance. But remember, less is more. Don't overspray. Your fragrance should complement your presence and not replace it. Okay, that's it for level 3. But before we head into level 4, where things get really interesting, we want to say something. We know this is a lot of information compressed into one video. And most people stop here. They consume content but never take the next step. So if you're actually serious about all this and want all the exact plans, guides and protocols all at one place, then join our school community. Inside you'll get access to 13 science-based protocols, including the full glow protocol, height protocol, hair protocol and many more that cover everything else. You will also unlock exclusive explanation videos, 10 different nutrition plans, 6 different exercise plans and our cookbook with over 50 recipes for every budget. On top of that, we are currently running a glow up challenge where the best transformation of a community member wins 500 US dollars. If that sounds good to you, join us using the first link in the description. Okay, now let's finally move to level 4, where the techniques get more advanced and technical. Let's start this level off with something that can give you instant results. Proper de-bloating. Most people don't realize how much excess water retention can affect their appearance, especially in the face. A less bloated face means sharper contours, more visible jawlines and better definition. One of the easiest ways to reduce puffiness is cold exposure. Applying ice or a cold spoon in the morning constricts blood vessels and tightens the skin, which can make your face appear significantly more defined within minutes. Another method is lymphatic drainage, using gua sha or a facial massage tool. Researchers found that both interventions effectively improve facial contours through distinct physiological mechanisms, gua sha through changes in muscle properties and facial roller through enhanced skin elasticity. So done correctly, this can reduce puffiness, define the jawline and improve overall skin tone. But while topical methods help, bloating is often caused from the inside. Most people consume way too much salt, because it's added to nearly every processed food. But at the same time, they get far too little potassium. That imbalance shifts the fluid balance in your cells, making your face look puffy. Ideally, your potassium to sodium ratio should be around 2 to 1. You can increase your potassium intake through foods like bananas, salmon, fruits, avocados, nuts and coconut water. But reducing bloating isn't just about what you eat, it's also about how you eat. Most people 
will never think about it. But chewing plays a much bigger role in facial appearance than you would expect. If you chew primarily by moving your food with your cheeks instead of your tongue, you're placing stress on the buccal muscles. And when you do this every single day, those muscles start to grow and thicken, which can lead to a puffier, more bloated looking face. So use your tongue to position the food instead of your cheeks. But proper chewing isn't just about avoiding bloated cheeks. It's also a chance to engage the right muscles, like the masseter. The masseter is the primary muscle responsible for chewing. And it plays a major role in how your jawline appears. A 2018 study found that increased masseter thickness was associated with stronger jaw morphology and lower facial height. Features commonly linked to higher attractiveness. But it doesn't mean you should start overtraining it. You don't need overpriced jaw trainers or influencer chewing gums. Those are just a money grab and can make things even worse by potentially leading to TMJ and asymmetries. It's enough to include more hard foods into your diet. Also, make sure you're not always chewing on the same side. Over time, this can lead to visible asymmetries because the masseter and buccal muscles on one side become more developed than the other. So if you always chewed on one side, try switching it up. But there's also another muscle group that can drastically affect your appearance. And it is something you rarely see someone train at the gym. Take a look at these two pictures. They're absolutely identical, except for one thing the neck. The version with a slightly thicker neck looks stronger and more masculine. And that's not just an opinion. A study by Dr. Mitch Brown and colleagues found that men with thicker necks are seen as stronger, more capable and even better potential fathers. So how can we increase the width of our neck? Just like with any other muscle, hypertrophy training is the answer. But be careful, the neck isn't exactly like biceps or chest. It's much more sensitive. You should always warm up properly, start light and prioritize form over weight. We have linked this great neck training training guide by Jeff Nippert in the description. Okay, you have now successfully completed the first four levels of this video and made it to level five, which is about the final 5% of potential improvement. Improvement that is not naturally achievable. But please, if you ever even briefly considered cosmetic procedures, listen to me for just one minute. I'm not here to tell you whether you should or shouldn't do it. I fully understand the desire. Sometimes there's a feature you've been insecure about for years and changing it might genuinely improve yourself image. That's valid. But here's the problem. It's very easy to hyperfixate on one specific trait and convince yourself that fixing this one thing will solve all your insecurities. But that's almost never the case. If you're unhealthy with bad hair, bad skin and a bloated face, a jaw implant or rhinoplasty won't magically make you attractive. In fact, it might even make things worse. Surgery should only be considered once you've optimized every other level in this video. But never as a shortcut, never as a solution to insecurity. Because no procedure replaces the power of long-term effort, health and self-care. The real transformation starts with the things you control every single day and not at your doctor's office. Take care, bye.